broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. And HMSA, helping Hawaii's youth and their families stay healthy today, tomorrow, and for generations to come. HMSA, trusted for generations. Next on Hikino, stories from across the island chain. Don't let society forget about us. Don't. The tragedy at Sandy Hook Elementary in Connecticut transforms this corner mural and the community of students and artists that created it. Plus, the many moving parts involved in planning and preparing our state's public school lunches. Students are not the only ones being bullied at school. What we don't know about e-cigarettes, teachers embracing technology, and garden aisle gridlock. All on this episode of Hiki no, coming to you from Aliamano Middle School on Oahu, home of the Panthers. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network. Hiki no. Can do. Welcoming you from the Salt Lake area on the island of Oahu, we are the Mighty Panthers of Aliamano Middle School. Our school was founded in 1959 and is just minutes away from the Honolulu International Airport and Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam. That pretty much explains why most of the students at our school have a connection with the military and the federal government. Yeah. This makes it all the more important that we have special programs such as the Welcome Back Assembly and the Spirit Games that help students build new relationships and strengthen old ones. Our first story takes us to Wheeler Middle School in Central Oahu where students find out what it really takes to feed 100,000 public school students. What's for lunch is a question wondered by the approximately 100,000 students eating Hawaii Public School lunch each day. What they might not realize is that what's on the plate is not an individual decision by the school cafeteria manager. We just follow the state and federal guidelines for what's on top of the plate. We have no choice on any deviations from it. There's a group of managers that go through that um, and we rotate from middle school, high school, elementary schools, all take turns on top of that menu planning committee. Once the menus are established, the 196 school cafeteria managers, like Mr. Andrew Pang, will select which menus will be used on what day. Each menu also requires the use of committee provided recipes. For example, if it's your three bean salad, that's a standard recipe. I think we're having hot dogs. Shopping for supplies involves more than just them going to the grocery store. Food is ordered in advance once or twice each week from the approved state vendors. There is purchase items and there's federal commodity items. Federal commodity items is what comes from the federal government. You might have your hamburger, you might have your chicken, you might have um, oil or something like that. Everything else is purchased from local vendors. We have to order it within the two weeks and then it'll come in. Processing weekly deliveries of 350 pounds of chicken and making sure pantry items are properly stored are another responsibility of the cafeteria managers and staff. When all health and safety guidelines are followed, then the cooking can begin. We start at six. Um, what happens is that all the cafeteria workers, they start starting the lunches, they're starting the breakfast, they might be mixing the bread, they might be making, like this morning, they'll be making banana bread for breakfast, and then after they finish the banana bread, they'll move on to the bread that's for lunch. They'll be making things that's for the next day. Um, they're just making everything that's ready for that day, making it for lunch, and then they're prepping, getting ready for the next day. The average meal costs $5.05. But students pay less than half of that, or $2.50 per meal, due to the almost $50 million in federal reimbursements. So next time students are standing in line to get their serving of soft-shell taco or hot dogs, they should think about all the unseen work that went into getting it on their plate. This is Lori Ed Martinez from Rio Middle School for Lucina. In Hawaiian, Alimanu means the resting place of the birds. One of the birds that migrate here in late summer is the Pacific Golden Plover or the Kolea. The Kolea spends part of the year on the tundra of Alaska and Siberia. After months of putting on weight, they embark on a non-stop journey of two to four days. 
Once here, they will stake a claim on territory that they will return to year after year. Some of these areas are right here on our campus, including a spot just outside our Panther Vision studio. Our next story takes us to Kauai, where students from Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School ask why some of the worst traffic in Hawaii is found on the Garden Isle. On the east side of Kauai, residents are having to deal with a problem that has become all too common, traffic. Well, I think right now, a little bit of the traffic that we have right now is caused by construction. So we have, in other words, the, the normal flow that we have has been impeded by the construction, having to close down certain lanes due to construction. So that's problem number one. The second problem is a lot of people rent a car to be on this island because they like to go out and explore. Traffic increased because of our population increased by about 15,000 and also the tourist population increased. So we have, again today, a traffic problem. The traffic congestion has been very frustrating for the residents. On bad days, it can take up to five times longer than usual. By that small cemetery, by that triangle uh, across the street from a Ono, ono family restaurant, just to go there. I think it took me 15 minutes one day to get to Long's Drug, and normally that's, that's a, a three minute ride. The uh, inability to just get home or get to the grocery store, run simple errands, uh, it takes considerably longer. Well, I can say for uh, Growing Greens Nursery, way up on Kauaiha Road, the traffic doesn't really affect us up here. But when you get into downtown Kapa'a, uh, everyone down there is affected. I mean, it's just, it's a nightmare to get out of the Safeway parking lot. It is uh, something that people don't want to do. Construction being done by the Department of Transportation may be one of the reasons why we have traffic congestion, but their main intention is to help improve the traffic flow. What we are planning on doing is widening out some of our highways, adding more facilities for buses, adding more uh, sidewalks, uh, creating more bike lanes, and those type of projects will actually reduce some of the traffic on the highway during the daytime and into the evening as well. Although a lot of effort is being given by the DOT, if we don't act fast enough to solve the traffic problem, tourists may soon join the frustrated community and it may become a threat to our economy. We actually decided to come here because we heard it wasn't quite as bad. Yep. So if it got worse in the future, then it would definitely affect our decision. So if the amount of visitors were to drop for the island of Kauai, it would have an impact on overall jobs have an impact on people's businesses. Um, we've actually seen restaurants and some small businesses could close and that's happened before when we've had a drop in tourism. Local residents continue to deal with the traffic and finding ways around it and some are hopeful that it will get better. The question is when that will be. This is Brandon Marcos from Chiefess Kamakahele Middle School for Hiki No. If you'd like to comment on this story or anything you see on Hikino, please join the discussion at facebook.com slash hikino can do or send us a tweet at twitter.com slash hikino can do. And we're back at Aliimanu Middle School in Salt Lake, Oahu. There are many interesting things that go on here. It's not just what's happening inside the classrooms that's being noticed, it's what's happening on top of the buildings that's getting people's attention. Our school is part of a statewide program to utilize photovoltaic energy systems. These solar panels, which were installed in 40 other schools, will generate enough energy to save the state more than $7.7 .7 million over 20 years. Moreover, each school was given a flat screen monitor that will allow students to keep track of the power that is being generated and the amount of carbon reduced and energy saved as a result of the solar panel system. We take you now to the leeward coast of Oahu for a story from Waianae Intermediate about a teacher who is the victim of bullying by students. And I want you guys to label the right angle. So what I mean by that is... Fitting in is something that everyone has a hard time with, especially when you're growing up. When I was younger, like I, I wasn't into sports. I wasn't into um, stereotypical things that guys were into. But for Luis Sanchez, fitting in was the least of his problems because... When I was younger, I was bullied by other students. They would not want to sit by me. Um, I was called sissy. The name calling and bullying he experienced affected him deeply. It made me feel worthless. It made me feel like 
I didn't matter. One time in middle school I did try to commit suicide. Uh, and one time in high school I tried again. As he grew up, he thought the bullying was finally over. So I'm multiplying one by five. There was an incident at the school where students were writing things. Um, Mr. Sanchez is gay around my walls. Um, and uh, among other things, uh, among my outside walls. It made me feel like I was in elementary school again. It made me feel like somehow I didn't have control over it, even though I do, because I'm an adult. But this time, he was not alone. Mr. Sanchez did not deserve to be treated that way, and I think those kids should have some consequences. He had come to work every day for two months and, and saw that all over the walls outside his room. And it was um, you know, disheartening, just, just really, really upsetting to see a teacher getting bullied by his own students. At the start of each school year, all YNI Intermediate students are given a Chapter 19 booklet that explains the rules governing student discipline and misconduct under state law. I went into each classroom and had a discussion with the kids about Chapter 19 all over again with the focus on bullying and how bullying isn't acceptable nor is it tolerated on the Waianae Intermediate School campus for any student or teacher. In spite of a few bad apples, there are students who look up to him. You can always go to him when you need someone to talk to, like even though it's not about school or math or anything. Like, if you want to talk to him about problems or anything, you can go to him. I think he's a really good teacher. I really like him a lot. He, no matter what he goes through at this school, he keeps trying, he doesn't give up. By not giving up, Sanchez has brought positive changes to the school. I actually had a meeting with the teachers, um, and there were several teachers that Mr. Sanchez was talking about the incidents that were happening in his classroom, and so they actually came to have a meeting with me and gave me some contacts of people who could come in and educate both teachers and students about bullying in general. The changes made in school have allowed Luis Sanchez to move past the bullying and move towards forgiveness. I love all of my students and I understand that middle school is a really tough time, but I guess the main thing I would want them to know is what that is uh, I forgive them. This is Lehalia Punui reporting from Waianae Intermediate School for Hikino. And we're back. Listening to music has always been a popular pastime with students. Playing a musical instrument is too. And in Hawaii, students often spend their free time strumming the ukulele. It's pretty relaxing and it's a great way to get in touch with the local culture. When asked why the uke is so popular, many students say it's because it's unique and interesting. Plus, it's small and is easy to carry around. Also, it's very simple to learn. With the uke, you can pretty much play anything. Our generation is known for being obsessed with technology. To address this, schools are working hard to keep up with the times, including the creation of digital media programs. In Hawaii, there are some very well-established media programs, many of whom are involved with Hiki no. Here at AMS, we have PantherVision. At PantherVision, our job is to inform our fellow students on what's happening around our school. We do a live daily morning TV show called the Panther Preview, and throughout the day, our digital signage system displays information regarding the class schedule, the lunch and breakfast menus, and events going on at our school. We travel now to the Valley Isle, where students from Maui High School investigate the pros and cons of e-cigarettes. According to Jess Lovely from Island Vapor e-cigarettes, customers switching from tobacco to e-cigarettes, they just don't want to smoke anymore. Electronic cigarettes or e-cigs use a heating element to turn a liquid or juice into a vapor which the user inhales. <laughs> We're vaping. We're not smoking. We vape. Vaping has helped some move away from tobacco and nicotine. For 15-year smoker Angie Avila, switching to e-cig has helped her quit her pack-a-day habit. About a week after I started, I, I didn't have the urge to have a, a regular cigarette. Yours is pretty full. I right? don't have 24 in it. By controlling the amount of nicotine in the juice, users can ease themselves from their addiction. So yeah, it comes in different nicotine levels and you want to make the adjustments and it's up to the client. If they want to completely get unaddicted, from nicotine, if they want to lose the addiction, it's up to them to come in and buy lower and lower levels until finally they don't feel like they need to use nicotine anymore. 
For some, the physical experience is just as much a part of the addiction. Because of e-cigs striking similarity to their tobacco counterparts, they satisfy the user where gum and patches have been known to fail. Because you're partially addicted to the action of smoking, so it gives you the action and it gives you the, the nicotine as well. But yeah, I think this should be eventually considered to be a nicotine patch kind of substitute. Beautiful. But in order to be recognized as an official addiction treatment, e-cigs would need approval from the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA. The most mis common misconception that we hear um, is that they are something that you can and should use to quit smoking. Um, and again, they're just, they're not an approved FDA approved cessation device. Hawaii has banned the sale of e-cigs to anyone under 18 since 2012. In September, our Attorney General joined 38 other states to urge the FDA to regulate this industry. But it remains unregulated because e-cigs six years on the U.S. market haven't provided the time necessary to observe long-term effects. The problem right now um, is that there isn't really any conclusive research to show what the health effects of e-cigarettes are. So right now that research is going on, it's just not ready to be published yet. The cloudy information on e-cigs paired with their rising popularity has medical and health professionals uneasy, with concerns ranging from its lithium-ion battery to the product's quality, ingredients, and emitted particles. This issue continues to sizzle. E-cigarettes do contain detectable levels of known chemicals that cause cancer. The other thing is um, there seems to be a pretty big problem with quality control with e-cigarettes where sometimes um, what's labeled on the cartridge as far as the amount of nicotine that's inside doesn't actually match what we see in the product. Um, in addition, the dose of nicotine that folks are getting when they inhale can vary each time. So there seem to be some pretty big quality control issues with the products. Let's, let's get you another one. Other As than... research drags, so will e-cig users. It has been estimated that this industry will hit $1.7 billion this year. All that can be said in certainty is that this product will impact many. For now, we just wait to find out in what sense of the word. This is Gail Tolentino from Maui High for Hiki No. We're back to this community of Salt Lake here in Honolulu. Our school campus is just a few blocks away from the actual lake where this area gets its name. Salt Lake is located inside of an extinct volcanic crater called Aliapa'akai, meaning salt pond in Hawaiian. The Salt Lake was once 1.5 kilometers across and it was very shallow. So, an artesian well was dug to get more fresh water into the lake, push salt out, and to increase the amount of water inside the lake. This process was actually successful, and the Salt Lake today is now a freshwater one. In fact, it's a prominent feature of the Honolulu Country Club. Pretty interesting, huh? Our next story comes from a school that's just a stone's throw from here. Moana Lua High School, where students look at the impact of a new rule allowing more technology into the classroom. With time, everything changes. And when it comes to education, technology is changing everything. I think technology is just such a part of all of the young people's lives now. So we're trying to incorporate more and more technology into the classroom. To keep up with the change, Moana Lua has created a new school policy that allows students to use their cell phones in school. It says that students can use cell phones and tablets in class for information gathering. There's lots of ways to gather information and certainly technology is probably the biggest way now. This change has received positive reviews from both students and teachers who are already thinking of more ways to incorporate technology into their classroom. You know, the new programs kind of grab their attention, maybe hopefully get them to get a little bit of interest, you know, started. And then from there, it's really their motivation. I used it for the dictionary in my AP Lit class. I really like how they made it more flexible towards the students this year. I think any teacher would realize that they're already doing these things before, but I think just making it okay for them to do it now um, puts more access at their fingertips, and I think as long as they're using it responsibly, I think it's really going to make a difference and bring um, relevancy to the classroom. But for some, this policy also seems to be something that will distract students from their learning. People would mostly use it for playing games in class not for school use. So I think people are definitely going to take advantage of this rule. I tell my students that a phone can be uh, something that is either used for safety, at the same time it can be dangerous. It's not just a phone, it's a camera, 
and a recording device, uh, a listening device for music. Um, one of the things that I tell the students all the time is that I think school should be practice for a job. And we always talk about making students um, college and career ready. And there's a lot of jobs where cell phone use is just either banned or impractical. That's part of why I wanted to change the rules about technology is I want to give students a chance to show that they can be ethical and appropriate users of technology for the right reasons. If they were limited and they weren't able to use it, then who's going to teach them what's right and what's wrong? You know, there's a time and place and we're here to guide them. Schools have gone digital and have a new resource in their pockets. We can only hope that this new school policy can be put to a good cause. Because like technology, it's here to stay. This is Christian Casinas from Wanalua High School for Hikino. And we're back at Ali Manu Middle School. Sports are a great way to stay healthy, but they also provide students with an opportunity to build friendships and teamwork. Many students participate in afternoon intramural games with such colorful names as the A-Team and the Flying Pandas. There are also competitions against other middle schools in sports such as volleyball, cross country, and track. And to get the teachers and staff involved, there are much anticipated staff versus students games that always draw big crowds. Our final story takes us to Konawaina High School on Hawaii Island, where students show us how a tragedy that occurred 5,000 miles away brought a community and Kona closer together. Over the rainbow. In a small community in Kealakekua, Hawaii, young artists created a public mural. What started out as a mural to beautify and inspire students on an elementary campus transformed after a national tragedy in Newtown, Connecticut. On December 14, 2012, 20 children and six teachers were fatally shot by a gunman who entered Sandy Hook Elementary School. While we were painting, we were listening to it on the news, and it was, um, it, it kind of changed how we felt about the mural. And we were painting the young boy who is waving out at his parents. and. When a parent drops their kid off in the morning, they expect their kid to be there. And for 20 parents, um, they, um, that didn't happen for them. In response to the tragedy, a new focus for the already initiated mural at Konawana Elementary was selected. Young ladies from the Twinkling Stars for each club and Konawana High School students volunteered their time and talents to create a mural that hopes to remind the public to never forget the victims of Sandy Hook Elementary School. It like, makes me think about like what if this happened here and I would want someone out there to know about it. Twenty flowers were painted to represent the children and six bees were painted symbolizing the teachers who lost their lives at Sandy Hook. The children who are represented as the flowers, they're protecting our children here at Konawana. And then that white flower, they're saying, don't let society forget about us. Don't. It, it was really healing to those that worked on it. it, it felt good, it felt, okay, I'm doing something, I'm doing something good. I learned it took a lot of work to do it. It took so many people just to get this together, not only painters in uh, general, but it took the people that put it up, it took everybody. It's not every day you get asked or you volunteer to, um, to help paint a mural. And that it's a good feeling because we're representing the teachers and children that died in the Sandy Hook. The message of never again is forever portrayed in the mural dedicated to the victims of Sandy Hook Elementary School. This is Shalene Ireland reporting from Konawana High School for Hikino. Here we are back to Alimanu Middle School where students are pretty serious about their artwork. 
Every year, we are fortunate enough to have our students place high in the annual Hawaii Regional Scholastic Art Awards. A great role model for these talented the artists of is their teacher, like you. Mr. Ted Urthani. Mr. Urthani was Bank one of, of many Hawaii artists Foundation. who helped recognize the Hawaii Investing State Library's 100th Future anniversary by working together to create a beautiful and mural other as a celebration gift to the library. Skills through Each artist had a section that reflects upon the artist's personality and, HMSA, and their concepts helping Hawaii's of Hawaii. Youth and their family Hopefully, stay in another 100 years, today, people will tomorrow, still enjoy it and with for amazing. generations to come. Well, HMSA, trusted for generations. Remember, all these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you've enjoyed watching them as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Make sure to stay tuned to next week's episode for more proof that Hawaii students hiki no can do. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. And HMSA, helping Hawaii's youth and their families stay healthy today, tomorrow, and for generations to come. HMSA, trusted for generations.